and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Welcome to the stage, James Lovery! joining me here today, this is absolutely awesome. So, uh, give us a cheer if uh, I fly during the street and harass you. Yeah. Okay, okay, all women, so that says a lot about, <laughs> says a lot about me. Uh, good, okay, cool. Because like, the idea of this, I, uh, who here, give us a cheer if you have a memory that is so embarrassing it still haunts you? <laughs> okay. Okay, <laughs> relax guys, I know you do because you put them here. Uh, yeah, because I, because uh, like, loads of people uh, have like those embarrassing memories and they haunt and they scare and stuff like that. I'll, t I'll talk about, that's going to happen a lot by the way. Uh, the the aircon just goes, ah, so it sounds like someone's trying to buzz in to this room. It's gonna, guys, it's pretty fucking distracting, but uh, I think you're a smart crowd, I think we can get over it. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. so all right, I'll talk about an embarrassing memory of mine that uh, I think will unify us so we can all kind of relate on. Um, I lost my virginity, uh, age 16, at Reading Music Festival in an XFM tent that I'd won off the radio. <laughs> yes, buzzing correctly. Uh, that is nice. I had barely hit puberty. Uh, I was berated before, during and after the event. It was pretty memorable, guys. It was pretty memorable. Give us a cheer here if you've had sex. <laughs> Relax guys, I'm not scouting for virgins, that's not where this show is going. Here's another embarrassing story. I'm a paedophile. No, like, it's, it's, it's not where this is going, it's fine. Uh, give us a cheer if the first time you had sex, it was amazing. Oh. Bullshit. Uh, liar in the corner. Give us a cheer if the first time you had sex, it was awkward and weird. Because you don't know what you're doing, they don't know what they're doing, at least they shouldn't know what they're doing, because otherwise that is predatory. And uh, just like everyone else, my first time was awkward and weird, but unlike everyone else, after the incident, <laughs> don't call it an incident. Uh, <laughs> oh, that made it sound more criminal than it was. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, after the. <laughs> mm, okay, really in, James. Uh, no, after the. Uh, I was going to say session then. <laughs> what about a 16 year old, I think I was, walking around a festival? You're like, laugh, fancy, I'm back to my tent for a 30 second session. <laughs> like her. Like her. Uh, after the, um, we'll say event, we'll go with event. Uh, just like everyone else, my first time was awkward and weird. But after the event, I then had to pack up the location in which it happened, right? <laughs> Put it in my bag and take it home with me. <laughs> well, I stored it in the bridge unit above my bed where it literally hung over me the rest of my adolescence. <laughs> like the ghost of Sexmas Parts being like, Ooh, James, remember when you said thank you immediately afterwards? <laughs> it's we all know that happened, we do not need to relive it. So, yeah, uh, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start, we've got quite a few here, this is quite nice. I'm going to read some of the embarrassing stories. So I like, I like the idea of owning embarrassing, because if you laugh at your embarrassing stories, they're no longer embarrassing. So. Uh, this one is, uh, I got so drunk in a bar, and a guy pulled seat away, and I fell. I mean, it's written like a toddler, but... Uh, <laughs> to this day, I don't remember this happening, but my friends tell me. Okay, good. That's uh, a good start. <laughs> Maybe the more embarrassing thing is your literacy. Um, okay, right. I painted my face green to dress up as a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Three weeks later, I was still green. <laughs> I used the wrong paint. <laughs> Who was that? Me. Awesome! <laughs> I'm keeping all of these. Um, yeah, because the right, reason I, I talk about this is because December last year I had a memory so embarrassing that I felt physically sick, wanted to cry. Uh, I'll tell you about it. So when I was uh, nine, uh, I used to go play in the field behind my garden. I lived, I lived on the back of a school field, so I used to go play in the school field. And once when I was nine, I was over there and I got touched. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Imagine I just cried for the next hour, you're like, shit, we're locked into this. <laughs> no, no, this isn't that kind of show, I'm not that desperate for an award. Um, so, no, I, uh, oh, when I was nine, I used to go play in the school field, uh, and I would go over there with bottles of water, and I would sit in the sand of the long jump pit, and I would pour water onto the sand, and, 
<laughs> That's going to happen a lot. I would pour water onto the sand, and I would make breasts. Because I was curious what they felt like. <laughs> like a psychopath. Basically. Nine, nine years of age, I'm sitting there going... Nice. <laughs> right? And that's pretty embarrassing, right? My dad caught me doing that, and we have never spoken about it, right? <laughs> I looked up, locked eyes at him, and just went, nah, we're good. I just kind of walked on. Because, <laughs> right? of course, how do you even have that conversation with your son being like, James, when a man loves a woman, stop fondling sand. Like, it's just... <laughs> it's not in the rule book. Guys, by the way, everyone stand at the back. There's a whole bench here that uh, is not a table. So... <laughs> Down. Um, yeah, so we've never spoken about it. Because yeah. that is embarrassing for me, but it's so much worse for my dad. Because my dad must have been like, Where's James? Like, oh, maybe he's in the field. Sometimes he plays in the field. I just go check where he is. Eh? <laughs> What's he doing in the sand pit? Is he been in sand castles? They don't look like sand castles. <laughs> sand mosques, maybe, but. <laughs> Oh no, they're tits, right? <laughs> so yeah, pretty embarrassing, we never spoke about it, never brought it up. And because like, I thought I could talk about all the embarrassing moments in my life and what's got, what I'm going through at the moment. But at the moment, I'm actually quite a happy comic. I'm not like a, a miserable guy. You get quite a lot of comics, like you two a couple, more like a couple of cunts. No, I'm just not... <laughs> just... <laughs> not that guy, I'm really good mood. Uh, and one of the main reasons I'm in such a good mood is that uh, this year, me and my girlfriend, we bought our first ever house. <laughs> Thank you, because that is not the reaction I get in London. You, you say that and people just go, oh, go fuck yourself, mate. Like, don't get me wrong, no, this doesn't pay, it's just that my girlfriend owes a lot more money than me. Yeah! 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 He's 2016. He's 2016, I am all for female empowerment. Just let me live in your house. Like, it's just... I'm like a stay-at-home feminist, it is brilliant, right? Because I was actually curious about this, I googled it. Does anybody want to hazard a guess what the average percentage pay gap between men and women in the UK this year is? Does anyone hazard a guess? 14. 14, you're close. Anybody else? 18. 18, this is like the world's most morbid auction, isn't it? How <laughs> depressed are they, guys? Can we go any higher? No, um, no, it is 19.7%. Not in the average, not, uh, almost a fifth. It's mental. And I went that and I got really angry and then I thought a bit harder and then realised, nah, I'm alright with it. And, uh, relax, though, it's not because I'm a sexist. It hasn't just turned quarter past land. That's not where this is going. The reason I'm okay with it is, yeah, that number is wrong and that is fucked up, but that number is out there. I realised within our household, I'm doing everything within my power to redress that balance. <laughs> so why don't you get a proper job? Because I'm a feminist and I'll sign off and get some money! It's not an argument you can win. Uh, but one of the other reasons I'm really, uh, really excited and happy about it is to have moved up in the world from dealing with letting agents to dealing with estate agents. Because I've dealt with letting agents my whole adult life and I can't help but feel like letting agents are like failed estate agents and estate agents are failed people. <laughs> Like, especially in London, they don't even need to try. The first place I went to visit, there was like a blood stain on the wall. And what's that? He went... And I've been joking, so it's like, oh, it's good. <laughs> oh my god, no punchline's gonna be that fucking thing, is it? That was amazing! <laughs> Oh my god, that's guess what you get when you do a free venue, guys. Just random buzz in the end. It's brilliant! Uh, no, what's that? You went, ah? Oh. I was like, it's not art, it's a crime scene, right? And the place we actually went to buy, like, buy the place I now own, co own, the bank owns, the place I have keys to, right? <laughs> when we first went to visit, there were loads of bars all over the windows, right? Front and back of the house, and loads of locks on the doors, and none of the other houses in the street looked like this. And I said to the estate agent, I was like, mate, what's with the bars? He's like, well, legally, I have to tell you. Which is a terrifying start <laughs> to any sentence. No good sentence starts, I will legally have to tell you, these muffins are delicious. No, I just, like, no. I was like, what is it? Was like, I will legally have to tell you, the reason the seller is trying to get rid of the property is uh, there's a bit of a psychotic ex-boyfriend and uh, he tried to break into once, but he successfully broke in once. <laughs> 
go on. And he's like, well, despite the restraining order, she doesn't actually feel safe in the house, even though the police got involved. She thinks he's going to come back. So yeah, she's put it on the market, wants to get rid of it as quick as humanly possible, because she's terrified. <laughs> and I listen to that horrific story of domestic abuse, and I looked at the fear in my girlfriend's eyes. I looked back to the state agent, and I thought to myself, Jesus Christ! We could probably get a really good offer on this place. <laughs> oh, we did! £20,000 on the asking price! Yeah. You give great high fives! Because <laughs> it is, you might think, but James, aren't you putting your girlfriend's life in danger for £20,000? I think, yeah, I might be, but are you, are you two a couple? Yeah. yeah, so if I said to you, would you put her life in danger for £20,000, would you do it? £15,000. £15,000? <laughs> I'm not kidding, the guy yesterday went, I'd do it for 20 quid, mate. <laughs> It. And you know, it's nice that you decide to end your relationship tonight. That's good. <laughs> Brave of you. Uh, no, because I think maybe that's dangerous, but at the end of the day, I, can, I just look at my girlfriend and think, yeah, karate lessons like, aren't that expensive. We could just train her to be a ninja, we still have money spare. It'd be brilliant, right? And I put my own life in danger as well, but the reason I'm okay with that, if I wake up one morning and some psychotic man is watching me sleep, I just think, yeah, but £20,000. <laughs> you alright, mate? Do you want a cup of tea? No. I've got twinings out back, mate. I'm minted now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess one of the other things I'm like really excited about moving is because I moved away from my old place. Because I, I used to live in a studio apartment with my girlfriend, right? And that flat was so small, we didn't even have a table to eat dinner on. We'd eat dinner cross-legged on the bed, just facing each other, just... <laughs> or back to back, we'd had an argument, just... <laughs> eat your pasta, you bitch. <laughs> I hate it when she calls me that. <laughs> Rude, innit? Um, and that place, so one thing I won't miss about that place was the neighbours, right? The neighbour downstairs was a guy called Augustine, right? Super religious, but really friendly, love him to bits. Neighbours upstairs, subhuman scum. Um, I say this confidently for two reasons. One, uh, the two weeks after I move in, uh, there is a dawn police raid. The police keep the front door of the building at 6 a.m., run upstairs, arrest two of them, cart them off, lads. Uh, and the second reason they're scum is the mother of the family, yeah, it's a family, uh, once started to stab me because I left cardboard in the hallway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because knife crime is a legitimate reaction to poor recycling in the <laughs> right, To give you some context what had happened, right, our shower's leaking, I phoned the landlord, I was like, mate, you've got to send some people around. And he did, he sent some handymen around, they fixed the shower, I was in bed all day, so I didn't know what had happened, but they left a load of cardboard in the hallway. Sorry, to reiterate, I was ill in bed. I wasn't just like shirtless lounging, you know. Like, Fix my shower, I'm a dirty boy. No. <laughs> don't know where that came from. Um, so, so yeah, the first thing I know is like about 8 p.m. The door goes up. <laughs> open the door and the mum is standing there. And she goes, "You fucking prick! Let me shit out on the floor. You never got a pram. You never my mum. You cunt!" <laughs> Do you know you're a mother? Because <laughs> I find that language unacceptable. <laughs> I think you're fucking funny, do you? You're mad enough to me! I can't have a knife! I'll do you! I'll stand in your shit old bed seat, you mug! <laughs> My girlfriend turned to me and went, Did she just call this place a bed seat? I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the problem. <laughs> Don't worry about me bleeding out on the floor. <laughs> She insulted the size of the flat. Cheers, love of my life. Right? <laughs> so we moved into this new place, and as a housewoman present, my girlfriend decided to get us a cat. Right? Now, I'm not really a cat person. I'm more of a dog person, not really a fan of cats. I don't like cats. I fucking hate cats, but... <laughs> she's the breadwinner, so... We got a cat. <laughs> what am I gonna do, buy a dog? I've got no fucking money. Like, so... <laughs> and, like... The thing is, I, I was like, well, at least, you know, we can pick it, you know, pick the kind of breed. I get, like, a British short hair. They've got little fat faces. They're cute. She's like, no, we're adopting. I was like, why? She's like, because it's the right thing to do. Like, but they're broken. Like, <laughs> those things are fucked. The warranty is void. Like, I'm going to force myself to love something. The last thing I need is to have a prolapse anus and trust issues. Like, <laughs> Not what I need, right? It's just like, no, you'll be amazing, you'll be amazing. Now, I don't know what has happened in mine and my girlfriend's relationship that she thinks that I'm going to be the turning point in this cat's life. Like, what kind of goodwill hunting moment I'm going to have with this feline being like, Oi, mate, you know the scratches on the sofa? It's not your fault. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's not your fault. Meow. <laughs> You're not listening to me, son. <laughs> it's not your fault. <laughs> well, now, it's not your fault. <laughs> 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 Get on board.
bored guys, I'll do the whole film. <laughs> Hunting starring Cat Damon. Let's try this, let's try this, get me to the ground. And my bills are paid, my bread is buttered. I don't need this thing to go well. So, uh, yeah, I like apples. Meow, 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 meow. Good. Uh, ludicrous. Ludicrous. Turn down career law for this. Uh, Alright, um, <laughs> so give us a cheer here if you've ever adopted a, an animal. I didn't know what kind of experience it would be. My girlfriend's like, look, the RSPCA are going to come round, check the flat, make sure it's habitable, interview us, make sure that we're good people. Uh, I've got to go off to work, so they're going to come round when you're home. Do me a favour, don't try and be funny. <laughs> what? She's like, don't try and be funny. You'll say something inappropriate, won't get the cat, I'll hate you forever. I was like, I'll show you why I'm not the breadwinner in this family unit. Uh, so she goes off to work, and this woman comes round, and she looks really morose, and I'm thinking, maybe one joke. <laughs> Mind you, can't hurt, can it? It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's so all around. All like, is this the living room? Yeah. Is this the hallway? Yeah. <laughs> is this the bedroom where the magic happened? No, okay, fine. Um, so we're walking around the cat, and she's like, um, "Have you ever, have you ever cared for a cat before?" And I was like, "No, no, I haven't." But I think we're going to be really good at it. I think we're going to be really good cat parents, as we call ourselves, carents. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, guys, we're not kitty fiddlers. <laughs> they didn't even react. She was like, here's your cat. Turns out, really easy to get cats. They're so unloved. There's so many, they're so unloved. It's a piece of piece. Ever punched a cat? No. Here's another cat. Brilliant. <laughs> easy. Easy. Just I'm on a side business peddling dead cat. I'm not, no, not dead. <laughs> Dodgy cats. Don't know why that, <laughs> that sounded much more morbid than it was meant to. Um, yeah, so the thing is, I, uh, I was convinced, I was convinced this cat was going to be a dick. I was convinced he was, and I hate to admit I'm wrong, especially when it includes an argument with my girlfriend, which is why I love talking about this cat, because he is a fucking prick. Right? <laughs> so I try to force myself to love it. I'm like, hey, buddy, how's it going? He's like, <laughs> all right, Corey, you have the kitchen. <laughs> Stand the hallway, I don't need to eat, it's cool. But he's a dick, right? And the worst part about it, right? He watches me when he poos. Now, that may not sound like something too distracting, right? But if you ever see a dog poo, they're just like, come on, mate, don't watch me. Come on, don't, don't look at me. This is embarrassing. Oh, don't, don't pick it up. Like, just, but my cat, all four, just stares at me and stares me out of the room. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm leaving then. Uh, <laughs> is to be the least masculine man in your house and the other man is a cat. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I... Oh, talking of dogs, right? They've got this insane story. So my mate Jay is a social worker, right? And he goes to people's houses and he interviews them to make sure they get all the correct benefits and requirements from the state that they need. And I think that is a truly admirable job. But he went to visit a guy last year and the most insane thing happened. He went to visit him. The guy was waiting for him in the hall, in the door doorway of his building and there was a dog in the garden, right? So Jay goes in, the guy welcomes him, the dog follows him in, he sits down and begins the survey. So far, so normal, right? So he's going through the questions. He's like, okay, so how long have you been out of work? Um, when was your last interview? Uh, what area of expertise are you looking to get into? Right? And as he asks these questions, the dog just goes mental. First starts barking and growling, claws a bit at the sofa, and then just does a poo on the floor. Like Jay looks at the dog, looks at the poo, looks back to the guy. The guy doesn't break eye contact, just carries on the interview. Jay's so like, well, I guess this is happening. <laughs> Weird, okay. Um, how many of you live in the house? Uh, does the other person seek benefits as well? Do you have any dependents, any children, or anything like that? As he's asking these questions, the dog rolls in its own feces <laughs> and then just starts running around the flat, smearing crap everywhere, going absolutely mental. Jay's watching this chaos unfold, looks back to the guy. The guy, sweating, doesn't break eye contact, carries on the interview. Jay's like, well, I need to get out of this house. Uh, <laughs> So he wraps up the interview as quick as he can and goes, OK, this has been really insightful. Thanks very much uh, for your help. Here's my card. We'll, we'll be in touch within a month. Any emergency questions, give me a call. And the guy goes, OK, cool. And as Jay goes to leave, the guy goes, uh, thank, thanks for coming. Um, are you going to take your dog with you? Your dog. 
So I thought it was your dog. It's like, why do I bring a dog with me to work? So I'm like, why don't my dog sit on the floor? I don't know, mate, but you've won a dog! And then they start arguing, and the dog runs at him. The, the bloke panics, runs out of his own house. And now Jay's alone in a stranger's house with a poo covered dog. He goes, no, he runs out. Now the dog owns a house. That thing has eight kids. Can you imagine how many benefits it gets? It's insane. It's a true story and I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. And the thing I love most about that story is what the fuck was going through that man's head <laughs> during that whole interview. Just... <laughs> Come on, Steve. We need to know this interview, mate. Come on. We don't need these benefits. You can do it right. <laughs> oh, here he is. He brought a dog with him. Bit weird. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, been out of work for about three months now. So... Last interview was back in June. Uh, mostly labouring, really. Well, the dog just did a poo on the floor. <laughs> Best not mention it. <laughs> Than I am. <laughs> yeah, just me and the missus living here. Uh, now nah, she's got a job, no benefits for her, thank God. Uh, no, no kids have yet, fingers crossed. Or <laughs> the dog just rolled in the sheets. <laughs> oh God! Oh God, it's everywhere. <laughs> Keep it together, Steve. Why is he so calm? <laughs> He's not even bleed. Oh, oh. Yeah, thanks, Cozy. God, month is it? That's brilliant. Yeah, oh. Oh. What do you mean it's not your dog? Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> the only thing better that is that the only thing that better that is no more's going through the dog's head, being like, oh, this ain't like going well. <laughs> I know what I'll do. Next six centimeters of presents. Yes. Brilliant. Right. So. <laughs> Man. See, the thing is that, so, <laughs> we moved into the house on, on the same month as my birthday, and the cat wasn't a birthday present. My birthday present was something altogether, altogether quite different. My girlfriend said to me, look, I, uh, I don't want to get you a gift, I want to get you an experience. I want it to be a surprise, so don't ask me about it, you'll find out on the morning of your birthday. I was like, brilliant, wicked. So I guess the morning of my birthday, she's like, if you guess where we're going, I was like, I have no idea. She's like, you're going to love it. I was like, wicked, what is it? She's like, we're going for a two day, all expenses paid, spa weekend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, like, are you surprised? I am surprised. Are you excited? I am surprised. It's like, no, James, this place is amazing. It's incredible. They do a pedicure so good that for £60, you won't recognise your own feet. And I'm thinking, darling, for £60, I can get so drunk, I don't recognise my own face. <laughs> like, you know, selling this one to me. <laughs> But I figured, you know what, so it, you know, spent a lot of money on it, you know, it might be fun, but I'll, I'll try and get into it. So we're driving up there and she's telling me all about the day. She's like, the first day is going to be incredible. We're going for a 45 minute soak in a tub made for two, then an hour long rub down and facial. And I'm thinking, I'm from Essex, an hour long rub down and facial has completely different connotations. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, well, I did it once in Thailand, I didn't think you'd ever want to share this experience with me, but <laughs> wicked! <laughs> I was severely disappointed. Um... <laughs> We get there, right? And you know what? To start with, it was all right. The soap was quite nice, the tub was quite nice. You know, you know, they played some nice music, there was bubbles in the water, they put salt in the water. I don't know why, I think it makes us cook faster. But <laughs> we're chilling out in the water, right? And all I can think for this 45 minute soak is, don't pee in the bath. <laughs> Just don't pee in the bath, mate. You're 29 years of age, you don't pee in the bath. You're a grown man, you're upset, so you're ruined, you spent a lot of money, don't pee in the bath. And I'm honest, guys, 45 minutes, 29 years of age, didn't pee in the bath. <laughs> with that, right? And I know a lot of the men in the room are going, that's pretty good, yeah. I'm very impressed with that. <laughs> because I thought, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, as we're getting out of the bath, well, look, I know you're not going to be as impressed with this tonight as I am, but I just wanted to let you know, I didn't pee in the bath. She went, you have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> that's disgusting. <laughs> now we're going to have a relaxing rub down, now they're going to wring your piss out of my skin. So, <laughs> good. So, I never Massage floor, so I didn't know what to expect. We go into this other room, right? And there's two beds, and I lay down on one of the beds and I put my face in the socket. And um, 
And I'm just like waiting for her. And all I can think is, look, she spent a lot of money on this massage, right? Even if you're not enjoying it, pretend like you're enjoying it. Be like, oh, yes. Right on the muscle. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what a patter is. Pretend like you're enjoying it, mate. You spent a lot of money. Yeah, pretend like you're enjoying it. But at the same time, I'm semi-naked. I'm going to have a strange woman rub me down. Don't get an action. <laughs> don't do it, mate. Don't do it. Don't get an action. You know, look like you're enjoying yourself. Don't enjoy yourself too much. Lay slap back in the middle. Great weekend. You keep your girlfriend, right? That's the plan. <laughs> That's the plan, right? So, I'm laying there, and these two women walk in, and they're like, they start the process like, mm, relax into the lavender. Let the lemon tree soothe you. I'm like, just fucking rub me. <laughs> just rub me. I'm not here for the theory. I'm here for the practice. I don't need any of this hokum. Just start rubbing me, right? So they start rubbing me, and guys, I'm not even gonna lie. Three minutes in. I'm asleep. Just passed out. <laughs> I slept the whole hour. It was the most expensive nap I've ever had. And I didn't pay a penny. My girlfriend was fuming. She was like, is he taking a fucking piss? <laughs> and when I say I slept through the whole thing, not just the massage, they steamed my face and worked it for blackheads. And I said, for, for the men in the audience, that's like someone holding a hot iron to your face and then a cheese grater. And I'm just like, <laughs> Apparently went, well, I've never seen this before. <laughs> Does he have a condition? He'll have a condition when he wakes up. Like, just... <laughs> so he gets in at the massage. They try to wake me up. They're like, Mr. Loveridge, Mr. Loveridge, Mr. Uh -huh. And as I wake up, I instantly realise the masseuse has screwed my back. All my left hand side is just shooting agony. I'm in so much pain. I'm just about to swing round and give her an earful. But as I do it, slow motion, I get lock eyes with the death stare facing up to me. And I was just like, she's like, do you enjoy the massage? I was like, oh mate, you're fucked here. <laughs> you're really gonna have to sell this. I was like, it was amazing! We should do this every year! Three days, three days before I could turn my head properly. She's like, you're in pain, aren't you? I was like, no, no, it's just how I am, it's really relaxed. <laughs> really relaxed stance, it's just it's how I'm alert I am. Uh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't give her a hard time, right? I shouldn't, because at the end of the day, she spent a lot of money on it, and it had been quite a nice present. I shouldn't give her a hard time, because I've been in some pretty bad relationships before. I went out with a girl quite a few years ago. We went out for three years, and it was awful. She was terrified. Absolutely terrifying, right? Give me an you know, idea of the kind of relationship I was in. A year into that relationship, I said to her, look, hey, I don't think this is working out. I think we should break up. And she went, no. <laughs> Lock that one in, shy. Like, terrifying, right? Like, here's a little secret, ladies. You may not have read this one in Cosmo, but if ever you want to keep a man in a relationship that he doesn't want to be in, just be fucking terrifying, and he'll be too scared to leave you. Right? One morning, I woke up with her hand around my throat, and I went, "What's going on?" She went, "I dreamt you cheated on me." <laughs> Sounds like a pretty good dream. <laughs> Right? And I, never, I never like to get her for birthdays or anniversary or any kind of present because I never know what to like. I never spent the time to get to know her or anything like that because I hated her. So <laughs> what I decided to do was get her a charm bracelet. And the reason being is every birthday, anniversary, Christmas or anything like that, I never had to think hard about a present that she might actually like. All I had to do was get a Pandora booklet and go. <laughs> I love you. And the best part about it is I can make up my own reasons behind the charms, and I never had to tell her. I could just be like, oh, look, happy birthday, I got you this clown. Because I'm secretly terrified of you. <laughs> oh, two years. Oh, mwah, mwah, look, I got you a diamond. Because your worth is vastly overstated. <laughs> Valentine's Day. Uh, look, I got you a panda. Oh, because we barely have sex. Just. <laughs> whatever reasons. What I love most about doing that joke, seeing people in the audience go, Oh, I've got a charm bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, uh, that relationship ended about four years ago, and uh, during that relationship, I thought we were really sexually liberal. I thought, God, we're so open minded. We're like, just trying all this crazy sex stuff. We're so liberal. By that, I just mean butt stuff. We did a lot of butt stuff, guys. <laughs> stuff from her butt, stuff from my butt. We did a lot of stuff from my butt, guys, a lot of stuff from my butt. Right? <laughs> Fingers, thumbs, phones, whatever we could find, just went right up there. I think I got a missed call, Laura. Just a lot of butt stuff. And at the time I thought I was so liberal, and it dawned on me only recently that deep down I must have known I wasn't actually into any of that. 
I just knew that she hated doing it more than I did. <laughs> and it was the only passive aggressive way I could get back at her without breaking up with her. She's like, are you sure you want to do this? I'm like, yeah, stick your finger on my butt! <laughs> I'll be honest, guys, you're the first audience not to truly go for that one and uh, not laugh. If, if you don't laugh, that just becomes a horrible admission, less of a joke. <laughs> you dropped the ball on there, guys. You dropped the ball. Man, come on. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> so, um... God, I, uh... <laughs> You know that you know that sand story I told at the start? No? Alright, yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. yeah. I may have sugarcoated it there but a bit guys. I may have I may have may not told you the whole truth. Um and only age, yeah, I did I did make breasts. Um I also made a whole woman out of sand and had sex with it. <laughs> and my dad caught me and we have never spoken about it. But he's nine, nine is made. What I've seen or read that made me go, yeah. This is the coarsest substance known to man. I think I'm gonna get my sexy part of my body, lay on top of it, and try and make glass. <laughs> what? what was I thinking? My dad saw his youngest son and was like, oh, I think I need to keep an eye on drugs. <laughs> Please, this memory just came back to me. I was in the shops, I was like, in Sainsbury's, like, oh, non bios, and I thought, oh, I could get some old grade C. I fucked a sad woman! <laughs> and now that's part of who I am, it's part of my genetic makeup, right? <laughs> no, it would have been easier if I had been touched. I mean, at least there's support groups. I mean, nobody in this room is turning around to their mate and be like, no, no, this happens to like a cousin's friend of mine. Like, just, it's more common than you think. No, I am a lone wolf in these sand fucking states. <laughs> and so I, think, I just feel like I have to talk about it to kind of own it. So seeing as we've uh, fleshed on my embarrassing stories, let's go for a few more of yours. Um, right. When drunk, fell over and snapped my thumb off the hinge. <laughs> Jesus, try licking the... Tried licking the bone, <laughs> sticking out to make it better. <laughs> I think you need a therapist, man. I like the fact that they put a too long, didn't read appraisal at the bottom of it, just said it fell over, broke thumb. <laughs> Tried to lick it better. That's a, your too long, didn't read short version is it takes the same length. <laughs> Was your long version? That Jesus, who was that? You, so what? It was like a like the. It's just oh my God. Let's have a look at it now. Let's see how it's almost scarred out. They shoved the rod down it to put it together. God. Right. Okay. Good. <laughs> I'm not sure what to say to that. I like. I take. I take the piss, but I think I'd end up in a dumpster somewhere afterwards. <laughs> Uh, right, I once sent a rather explicitly worded, uh, <laughs> wor worded sex text to my boyfriend when in high school when mobile phones were a f fairly new thing. I like that you put that in brackets, like, like <laughs> you need to know. Uh, it said all the things I was going to do to him and all the dirty things I wanted him to do. Unbeknownst to me, his mum was always using his phone that day. <laughs> and I could not look her in the eye. <laughs> The thing is, I did, a, I did a similar thing. Is that you? Yeah. <laughs> I did a similar thing when I had like a Nokia 3210. I remember sending like, whoa, a saucy sex message. When I was like 15, I wasn't getting any anyway. Like, it was, I sent it like, this is wish fulfillment. But I sent it to this girl that I'd met in a club, being like, oh, I'm gonna do all this, that, the other. And then I accidentally sent it to the last message, the last person I spoke to, which was my mum. Uh, <laughs> I was like, just shoot it, but I just phoned him. Oh, some guy grabbed my phone, and he's laughing. I think he might have sent you something. Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> this is a list, this isn't a story, this is a list. Got kicked out of Lily Savage. What, the person or? <laughs> Get out of him! <laughs> oh, 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 sorry, got kicked out of Lily Savage concert for laughing too much. Oh, fuck them, you're great. Freddie Starr locked me in a cupboard for laughing too much. But he's show. <laughs> you guys are weird! <laughs> We've got the last one here. Oh, God. Uh, what's this one here? Alright. My friend Hannah gave me... <laughs> my friend Hannah gave a guy a blowjob in the middle of Cowgate and doesn't remember. <laughs> I mean, there's some men in the audience who are like, so we wrote that one? Uh, <laughs> 
Oh god, you know what? I'm going to share another invention of my mind. I'm going to tell you about the uh, last time that I threw up on myself as an adult out of just pure panic alone. <laughs> uh, what happened was, I did a gig in a place called Coffs Harbour, which is a little town north of Sydney, and it's a tiny little town with a tiny little airport, and uh, the airport only has one runway and a departures lounge, the whole wall is glass, so we can see it's just a plane, you wait for your plane and that's the entertainment. And it's boring, and I hated it, and it was boring. So I was waiting for my plane, and I could see it on the runway, and it's like, it got delayed by half an hour, an hour, two hours, and in the end, like, this announcement came over the tannite, and it was the most terrifying announcement I've ever heard. It's like, <coughs> uh, the 1015 flight back to Sydney has been delayed due to a severe engine failure. <laughs> <laughs> Did they just say delayed? <laughs> Not, you're getting a new plane. No. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, did, I, did, I, did, I, did, I, did you just say delayed it? Yeah, don't worry mate, we're going to fix it. I said, like, fix it? They said severe engine failure. <laughs> the only thing worse than that is it doesn't have a fucking engine. What are you talking about fix it? It's like, no, sir, relax, we're going to fly two engineers over from Sydney, they're going to land, fix it, tickety-boo, you'll be home. Don't tickety-boo me. <laughs> that is terrifying, I don't feel comfortable, sir, relax. So I'm sitting there, like, just staring at the plane for about another two hours until this other plane lands, and these two... Shirtless yokels get off this plane. <laughs> they're wearing nothing but high vis trousers and nothing else, and they walk towards my plane with a swagger that I can only describe as unbecoming of aviation engineering. <laughs> Just... <laughs> and they walked up to the plane, and I kid you not, ripped a pan off the side and just started hitting it with hammers. Just... <laughs> At one point, they weren't even looking where they were going. And then they looked all to the terrified people looking through the glass in the departures lounge and just went... I'm gonna fucking die! So panic, right? And I just woman, I was like, I don't feel safe, I don't, I don't, I don't trust it, I don't feel safe, I don't, I don't want to get on that plane, I don't want to get on that plane. And this woman's like, sir, calm down, relax, uh, it's gonna be fine, the engineers are gonna get on the plane with you, fly back to Sydney. I was like, they can be suicidal, I don't know what their background is, they don't own shirts for some reason, like, I don't know what their quality of life is like, I just, I don't want to get, I don't feel sick, like, sir, relax, relax, and my mate was like, mate, just chill out, it's going to be fine, it's going to be fine, mate. And eventually the announcer goes, oh, the flight now is ready to depart, so we're walking us towards the plane, it's like a scene out of Green Mile, I was like, dead man walking, <laughs> dead man walking, they're terrified, like, they eventually get to the plane, and we're at the foot of the stairs going up, and the two engineers are standing there, still shirtless, and I was like, are you not going to get on the plane? I went, nah, mate, we can't. It's full. I was like, yeah, we're not. <laughs> and threw up on myself. Ironically, it ended up being a shirtless yokel myself, because I had to take off the sick shirt. So, my friend was sitting next to me, he was like, you are disgusting. So, <laughs> because uh, I have insane things happen to me all the time. My life is a series of weird events. I've got a friend called Matt, who is a computer genius, right? He's so, like, crazily talented. When he was, like, 12, he wrote a bit of code that Microsoft bought all the rights to, and it set him up for life. Like, that's the kind of person he is. And he uses this incredible knowledge to torture me. Uh, to give you an example, like, he found a way of sending an old kind of a, a flash message to the old iPhone 3s. So this dates when it happened. Like, you send a certain type of flash message to the iPhone 3, and it came up like a normal text message, but the second you slid to open it, it disappeared and there was no evidence of it ever being there. That's quite an interesting thing, because all the marketing possibilities, all the different uses of that. What he decided to do was message me, and me alone, for six months, to let me know that Umbongo was back on sale in Tesco. Right? <laughs> I lost my mind. I, was, I phoned Apple, I phoned O2, and I was like, I don't care if they sell it in the Congo, I don't want it on my phone! Mr. Lovage, we have no idea what you're talking about. Can you please stop calling him soon? It was insane, right? And like, so, last, last year was his absolute masterpiece, right? He, he for years, has been telling me to buy the domain jamesloveridge.com, right? It was available, it was out there, he was telling me, buy it, buy it, buy it. And for years, I ignored him, right? I was just lazy more than anything. I just couldn't be bothered. I'll get round to it one day, one day. Five years later, a mate of mine from uni goes, look, I'm, I'm practicing doing websites, I've made one for you, it's at jamesloveridgecomedy.co.uk, do, do you want it, it's free? I was like, yeah, I'll take it. This infuriated me, right? He was like, are you kidding me? I was like, what? And he decided to message me at two in the morning on a Saturday, and just said, sorry, I just checked because there's a camera there, I was making sure you were going to stand in front of it. There you go. Hi, guys. Be watching it later. Um, so... <laughs> Don't lean into it, he's going... <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, so he, uh, he messaged me at two in the morning on Saturday, being like, 
James, if you don't buy the domain jamesloveridge.com in the next 24 hours, you will severely regret it, right? I was out, I was drunk, it was a Saturday, I didn't do it, I severely regretted it. Right, because what happened was, a week later, he phones me all excited, he's like, James, I built the most amazing bit of technology, it will blow your mind. I was like, what is it? He was like, it's incredible, right? It, it runs on servers, it, can, it works with social media, it can record phone calls at virtually no cost, it works on a global platform, and runs on a tiny little thing. So, like, Matt, none of this means anything to me, I don't know what you're talking about, what is it? He's like, can I come around and show you? I was like, yeah, sure. So next day, he turns on the house and goes, it's incredible. Go on, jameslovridge.com. Right, okay. So I go on the, go on the website, jameslovridge.com, and up pops a picture of my face, right? And goes, this is James Loveridge. He is an idiot. <laughs> I told him to buy this domain and he ignored me, so now you can insult him here for free. And then he said a box that said name, a box that said email, and a box that said insult. He goes, watch this. He goes, name, Matthew. Email, mattatme.com. Insult, you're an idiot. He presses enter, my phone starts ringing. Yeah. What's this? He goes, answer it. I answer it, and I hear this. Hello, James. You have one new insult. James, prepare to be insulted by... Matthew. Insult begins. You are an idiot. <laughs> What the fuck is this? He's like, I built a 24 hour heckler hotline. Anyone can insult you from around the world for free. Right? And he'll call your phone and insult you and you have to take the insult. I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, it's incredible. It'll just keep calling you and if you don't take the insult, it'll just keep calling. So you have to take Yeah, he said, if you hang up, it'll instantly call back again. I was like, what? What? And he was like, yeah, it's incredible. It's not even that. It also runs on Twitter. So he records the insult and then tweets it out to a new ins uh, Twitter handle called at Insult Loveridge so everyone can read them back. I was like, what? And he went, yeah, and it's, it's amazing. Right? And, and the thing is, because you ignored me for five years, if you don't listen to five cumulative hours of insults in the next month, the website, jamesloveridge.com, will default to another website called lemonparty.org. Okay, other than that sick man in the corner, <laughs> I'll educate you what that website is. It's a website with one picture and one picture only, and it's just three old men blowing each other. Just a trifecta of old man love. Just go like that. I was like, what, what, who knows about this? He went, all your friends and family. I was like, what? Right, so my friends found out, I got about 20 insults. My dad found out, I got about 40 insults. Then it went viral. Right, it made the front page of Reddit. Uh, Lad Bible, Daily Mail Online, The Mirror, I ended up with 4,800 insults on my phone. <laughs> Just kept on ringing, it immobilised my phone. I couldn't, I couldn't not take insults all day, every day. So I'm going to play back to you some of my favourite ones that happened. So here's a few of them. Hello James, you have one new insult. James, prepare to be insulted by... Jack. Insult begins... It looks like your face caught on fire, and someone tried to put it out with a fork. <laughs> Cool Jack. <laughs> Got a few more? Hello James, you have one new insult. James, prepare to be insulted by... Joe. Insult begins. There are currently eight planets, but there will only be seven after I'm done destroying the Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that could have been my ex. <laughs> Hello James, you have one new insult. James, prepare to be insulted by... Cherry Lee Lavili. Insult begins. You have a tiny cock and you love to finger yourself. <laughs> that actually was my ex. <laughs> Legit, she found out, I was like, well, I'm taking this one down. Um, so then, then it went viral and then it kind of got more popular. So you might hear the number of insults kind of going up just a tad. Hello, James. You have 2,822 new insults. James, prepare to be insulted by... Tyler. Insult begins. Your mother is so nasty when she had phone sex that I've got an ear infection. <laughs> <laughs> I was a big fan of that one, Tyler. <laughs> that was pretty good. And this is about the point that a load of teenage American teenagers found out about it. Hello, James. You have 3,140 new insults. <laughs> James, prepare to be insulted by Anthony. Insult begins. Fuck your mother, you fucking faggot. I hope you get herpes and your dick falls off from herpes. <laughs> yeah, but they weren't all bad, because the only thing that had to go on was a picture of my face, so they weren't all bad, because I, I also got some nice ones. I got this one. Hello, James. You have 4,060 new insults. James, prepare to be insulted by... Dude Star. Insult begins. 
Hi, James. I am very sorry for you. So I only wish you a nice day and a fun time. Faggot. <laughs> Please, I'm not that technologically advanced. I, I, I never, really, I can never get Matt back on that one because the most I've ever done is mess with someone's Facebook. Like, like me and my brother used to do it. Like, has anyone here ever had their Facebook mess with? They've left it logged in. Yeah, what, what happens here? Just picture change, you know, status. Yeah, just stand in. Yeah. yeah, who did it to you? Unimate. Unimate. So here's the thing: if ever you get a chance to get them back. Do what I used to do to my brother, because we used to do it a lot when we lived together. We shared parents, I'm not bragging, it's the, th it's the thing we did. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, what you do is you don't change their, uh, like, you don't change their sexual preference or their profile picture to that of his recent ex. <laughs> he did not find that funny. <laughs> <laughs> what you do is you change their status settings, right? So the only people that can see their updates is you and them. And then you wait over the space of about six months as they slowly slip into depression <laughs> because nobody is commenting on their statuses. <laughs> so much fun because it starts out so innocent. He's like, who's up for drinks tonight? <laughs> nobody, Chris. <laughs> six months down the line, he's lost. He's like, why does nobody like me? James Lovewood likes this. <laughs> Just let them know I'm there. So it's fun. Because like, my, my family are uh, quite technologically inept as well. Like, my dad, the thing that winds up most about my dad is whenever I call him, he says his own phone number back to me. I'm like, I know, Dad, I called it. You have caller ID. What are you showing off? You don't have dementia. What are you doing? Like, <laughs> 2258. I know! Sorry, that's more just anger. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, so I, uh, cause I'm like, I used to go out clubbing with my brother, I used to, we used to kind of hang out a lot more and I've calmed down a lot since I've got a girlfriend. And, uh, one of my favourite memories, I remember once going out clubbing with my brother Chris and my friend Ben. Now my friend Ben is the spitting image of Daniel Radcliffe, he's like a carbon copy, right, it's creepy, right? We're all quite drunk and we're in a club, my brother's in a suit, he works in a bank, he's got a proper job. <laughs> we're all quite drunk and my brother goes... <laughs> I want to get in a VIP area. I've got an idea. You look like Daniel Radcliffe. I'm in a suit. <laughs> I got up to the bouncer and I went, mate, that's Daniel Radcliffe. I'm his agent. Let us in. I go, Chris, that's genius. You're a wizard. <laughs> Go for it. So my brother, cool as anything, walks up to Bouncer and goes, I am Harry Potter. <laughs> Damn it, Chris! So close! <laughs> Best man. It was a lot of fun. The wedding was fun, but the, the stag do was a nightmare because it was 25 people that I don't like. And uh, I thought it'd be fun to try and get my dad to come on a stag do. And I phoned up beforehand and I was like, Dad, Dad, you've got to come on a stag do. He's like, dot two, dot two, five, eight. I was like, Dad, you know. <laughs> I said, no, you've got to come on a stag do. He's like, nah, nah, I'll be embarrassing. I won't be embarrassing. It'll be fun. He was like, yeah, but what if they get a stripper? I was like, what if they do, they do it. Yeah, but what if she gives them a blowjob? <laughs> That's a prostitute father, that's a very different thing. Like, I don't think strippers do that. Well, I guess stag do's have changed. It's like, ah! Oh, I didn't want that made you filthy old man. But the thing is, like, I've been on loads of stag do's this year. Like, I'm not getting to that age, but last year I went on my first ever hen do. Uh, yeah, no one really knows how to react to that because I don't like the person going to, going to Hindu because of, you know, my penis, right? <laughs> but one of my best friends was getting married. She's been my best mate since I was 11. And uh, she was like, do you want to come to the Hindu? I was like, yeah, I do, I do. But I was a little bit nervous, right? Because from the outside, looking in, Hindus, a bit loud. <laughs> you can be a bit much, ladies. They can be a bit loud. And the reason Hindus are so loud is because Hindus are fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> They are amazing, they're so much fun. And I wanted to do it, but I wanted to do it properly. I wanted the full female experience. So yeah, I want to do it. So I put on a wig, some makeup, a dress, this inexplicable glass ceiling appeared. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> well, what's that about? The girl's like, it just happens, we are dealing with it. But don't mention it too much, because then you're moaning. I was like, fine, Jesus. <laughs> 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 
so we, we go to this club, right? We go to a bar, sorry, and the first, it's me and Drag, and a load of girls, and first the barman doesn't realise. He's like, right, ladies, what do you want? They're like, white wine sprints, uh, gin and tonic, I was like, pint of whiskey. <laughs> I panicked. I panicked, I was in a dress, I was overcompensating. I don't even like whiskey. I was like, what? <laughs> Went on to spritzers, turns out they taste amazing. <laughs> Well, I'm lemonade. Hello, I got spritzed off my tits. It was incredible. <laughs> the girl's like, we're going to a strip club. I was like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> so we go to the strip club, right? And I'm, I'm at the back. I'm on my heels. I can barely stand up. I'm like Bambi, right? right? And the stripper comes out, and the girls just lose it. They're like, whoa, I'll take your top off. Whoa, show us your abs. I'm like, get your cock out. <laughs> It's just an angry man in a dress. All right, sweet, I'll, I'll turn front. I'm like, do it all. So I touch him up to the front of the stage. I'm holding myself up by the stage, and this stripper just goes through, makes a beeline for me, right? Starts thrusting his penis in my face. But as I said, I'm spritzing off my tits. I am loving it. So I just start going, dick. <laughs> and the women around me go, <laughs> like a thousand women in Sapphire Theatre just going pick, 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 pick. Now, I don't know if you've ever sexually objectified a man. <laughs> well, that shit is amazing! Oh my god, just gonna give it a go. Gonna give it a go. To choose a man to his, just his penis. Like, it's it's so much fun, right? Now, I shouldn't be proud of this next sentence, but when I saw the fear in the stripper's eyes, <laughs> I felt bad. I felt bad. Because at the end of the day, he's just trying to do his job, and I'd objectified him, I'd embarrassed him, so I felt bad. So to make up for it, I decided to, uh, I decided to tip him. But I also decided to tip him 19.7% less than I tip a female stripper, so I'm sure he fucking likes it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm pleased you like that, because I like to think I'm funny, but I found out the other day, I'm not even the funniest person in my family. The funniest person in my family is my aunt. My aunt got a dirty phone call the other week, some anonymous number, phoned up and went, you never get something hold of my hand. She went, little love, you can't hold it in two hands. I ain't interested. <laughs> Sand story, guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really told you the whole truth there, boys. <laughs> I'm sorry, it may have sugarcoated one minor detail. Um, yeah, at nine years old, uh, nine years of age. Um, oh, you know, I made a, a whole woman. Uh, I was sand enough to yeah, she had breasts, she had arms, she had a stomach, she had a belly button. She's not a sand golem, not a freak. <laughs> Private parts, legs, all of that jazz. But at nine years of age, I wasn't talented enough or skilled enough to make a convincing head or face, so I didn't bother. <laughs> that is a headless sand corpse I was having sex with. My dad caught me and decided never to talk to me about it. I mean, he is seriously rolling the dice, not taking me to therapy. Okay. Like, on the other hand, look at me going, well, hopefully he grows up to be a stand up comedian. Like, just, <laughs> I don't I was like that. thinking, like, he's just look, looking around in my bedroom, looking for a box with a head of the, in, in it, like, what's in the bar? What's in the bar? <laughs> Terrifying, right? And he's never brought it up, and that just doesn't sit with me. Because we're not the kind of family that would let that slide, right? We're definitely. This thing, we're not the kind of guys, because I'll give you an idea. Like, when, once, when I was 13, uh, I went up to my room to have a wank. Um, and I fell asleep during the act, right? Probably all that heavy lifting, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't know where that come from. Um, so, yeah, I fell asleep during the act, right? Vulcan and poof! My, my, uh, <laughs> don't worry about it, mate. My uh, brother walked in and caught me, right? Naked, penis in hand, right? <laughs> asleep. <laughs> What he decided to do was run downstairs, tell my whole family, bring it upstairs, <laughs> and they took an array of photos. Right? <laughs> I was gonna, I even put different hats on me, right? I found out. <laughs> I found out weeks later, my mum and dad were like, "Well, my dad was just like, oh, you've not seen the pictures of me and mum in Crete, have you? They're in a photo. I'm having a look through. They're really good." I was like, "Oh, really?" <laughs> so <Son of> bitch. <laughs> Son of a bitch! He did! <laughs> Too right! And the idea that my dad caught me doing that, we've never spoken about it, just it, it doesn't sit well with me. And I know it's coming, that's his ace in the hole, he's definitely coming. And my Son of a bitch! Indeed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my 
my god, well that should be my catchphrase. <laughs> um, catchphrase! <yeah. laughs> so I, uh, I, <laughs> what was I even saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he's definitely going to use it. That's his ace in the hole. He's definitely going to use it. And my feeling, it's got to be my wedding day. It's got to be it. That's what he's waiting for, the big crescendo. You can just imagine on the day, he'd be like, um, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, um, I know it's not commonplace for the father of the groom to do a speech, but I really feel like you guys want to hear this. Um, <laughs> James, Lucy, you both look so beautiful today. We well, didn't make it any more special. And then I remember to buy you this bag of salad! Like just... <laughs> so that is, that is coming. That is definitely, definitely coming. And like, I just, I, I, the idea was, I thought if I write this show sorry, right, and sorry. do it, um, I would own this story, right? I don't like, I own it, and it'd no longer be. Uh, you guys alright? Yes, good. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, I thought if I write this story and, and talk about it on stage, everyone knows it, then I own it, right? And my dad, you know, my dad can't use this story against me. It's my story, right? And I think, yeah, I, I've won. I've won it. People laugh. Do you think? Do you think that that's worked? Do you think this is now my story? Yeah. yeah. I thought that, and then realised it won't really be my story until he knows that this is happening. He's not going to come. He's not coming to my show. So I got drunk one night before Edinburgh, and I decided to call him and confront him about it. <laughs> And I recorded the phone call. <laughs> yeah, good, good. Um, oh yeah, we're having a bit of a weird conversation at, uh, on the front yard. Just curious about this one. What's the most embarrassing thing you've ever caught me doing? Waiting in the lot. <laughs> and I, I let I let the uh, you didn't hear me, and I let the lid come down slowly, so that you didn't know. So you went, oh, oh it's good, I didn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, well that's a revelation. No, one of, one of the things that I a memory that came back to me. I was like, did that really happen? Did you ever catch me uh, hunting? A woman that made out of sand. Sand. Good, isn't it? All right. Well, <laughs> is my mess? What's that last thing? Nothing. Nothing. It's just uh, asking Dad if he remembers catching me having sex with a woman that made out of sand. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> yeah, no, that, that is how it went down. Um, all right, guys, but we've come up to the end of the show. Have you had fun? Yeah. Awesome. Have you had fun? Have you had fun going to the cinema? Yeah. Awesome. Well, look, guys, this has been absolutely fantastic. You've been an incredible audience. I've really, really enjoyed it. If you've had fun, please tell your friends. Tell about it. word of mouth really means a lot here in Edinburgh. So tell anyone you can, get them to come down. If you haven't enjoyed it, keep your fucking mouth shut. <laughs> no one likes a snitch. <laughs> Snitches get stitches. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, guys, and as you know, with these free shows, uh, it all is one on donations. So I'm going to be at the back of the room with a bucket. If you've enjoyed so please feel free to put some money in there. I mean, you guys yourselves said you enjoyed it more than the cinema, and that's what, like, £12 a head. But whatever, <laughs> you said it. <laughs> Don't be liars. Anyway, guys, you've been amazing. I've been James Lovridge. Have a fantastic rest of the fringe. Thank you very much.